Mordechai was going on. He was, he was saying, listen, according to Esther's logic, according to the nature, Teva, according to the natural sequence of things, yeah, she's right. This is it, and it's a death sentence. But Mordechai said, we're not thinking in the natural sequence of things. We're thinking out of the box, something that's going to bring us a salvation. What is that thing that's going to bring us a salvation? That's bitachon. That is faith and trust in God that is going to be able to bring us this salvation. The, um, the, the, there's a... In Malachim, in, in Malachim, there's a story about Chizkiyahu. Now, Chizkiyahu was, was, fell deathly ill. And he, he was very, very ill. And he was about to... He, he was visited by Yeshayahu Anavi. He was... Uh, literally, the end was coming. And Chizkiyahu went... And, and, uh, and I'm sorry, Yeshiyahu went and came and visited him. And Yeshiyahu, the, the prophet, the prophet tells somebody, the prophet tells the king, hey listen, it's done already, the decree has been issued. He says, it's game over. You know what, if, some, if a prophet tells you, hey listen, the decree was sealed, what would you say? Alright, the decree was sealed, there's nothing that I can do about it. Chizkiyahu told him, no, 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 no. He says, Ben Amut, son of Amut, he says, if you finish your prophecy, then remove, then, then remove yourself from my house. Because I have, a, um, I have a tradition from my father's father, which is David Amela. He says that even if there's a sharp sword on your neck, you never give up. A person should never give up from petitioning and asking for God for, for mercy. Mordechai was not worried at all about this decree. He knew, he knew that somehow salvation is going to come. How? Bitachon. There's something that's going to be with Bitachon. Now, I know this is something that's very difficult to understand, so we're going to explain this very, very clearly, B'zal Hashem. Before we do that, we have to answer a question. How come Mordechai didn't bow down to Haman? How come he didn't bow down to Haman? We know, like, it's a pikuach nefesh, it was a, it was a life risk. Not only was it a life risk, it was a life risk on the entire Jewish nation. And he was willing to risk everything not to bow down to, to Haman. As Mordechai was not only the Gadol Adol, he was also a member of the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin was, uh, you know, can't even begin to explain the, the highness of the, of the holiness. You guys are allowed to take off your, you know, you don't have to, uh, you know. So, uh, um, the, the, the holiness of, we're going to be here for a while, we just started. So, uh, um, the, the, ho- the holiness of the Sanhedrin was, don't feel obligated now. Okay, this attention is like too much on you. Okay. How are you doing? Welcome to the class. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So, the, you know, when you, when you think about, ab- about the situation that we're dealing with over here, Mordechai was on the highest, highest level. He knew all the 70 languages. He was an extremely, extremely high level. And when he's speaking about Bitachon, he's not speaking about, I believe. <laughs> I believe. You know, please don't give me a ticket. Please don't give me a ticket. I believe, I believe, I believe. Please don't give me a ticket. Please don't give me a ticket. Oh, I got a ticket. I didn't believe, I guess. You know, like, it wasn't like this, this, like, belief that we have nowadays. He had a belief, a bitachon, that he knew that no matter what, nothing is going to happen. Even if I am not going to bow down to, uh, even if I'm not going to bow down to Haman. He, and even furthermore, the Nesiv Shalom goes and says that it doesn't say that Mordechai did not bow down. It says that he would not bow down. Meaning that he had, he already said, he knew beforehand. He says whatever happened, he made a firm decision that whatever is going to happen, he's never going to bow down to Haman. And he knew that there is no possible way that something bad is going to happen from this. Even after the decree was made, which is something very difficult. Because we know the whole decree was made because of Mordechai. But Mordechai knew that nothing bad is going to happen. Says the Sabbath Kedisha of Lechavit. Says something amazing. Says there are times when a person finds himself in a situation that there is no way out. There is no way out. And he quotes a uh, um, a pasuk and he says a pasuk in Tehillim, chapter one thirty verse seven. It says Yachel Yisrael al Hashem that the the a person should have hope to God. A, a Jewish person should have hope to God. Ki Hashem Chesed va'abe Mafedut because the Hashem has Chesed has kindness va'abe Mafedut has many ways of redemption. Says the, says the Sabbath Kedisha, says like this, says, what's how Behemoth do? There's many ways of redemption. Says, no, no matter how bleak your situation is, no matter how terrible and how the outlook looks completely doomed, he says, never despair because there's always hope and that it could always change around. How does this go in the Pasuk? Val Behemoth do. Hashem has many, many ways of, of salvation, many ways of redemption, but what's the key? The key is Yechel Yisrael al Hashem. The key is that you have to have hope in God. If you have to have hope in God, then this will be able to deliver you with, from, ev- from, from, any, from any situation. And the crazy thing is, says the Nesiv Shalom, that it's proportional. Meaning that according to one's reliance on God, so too is the magnitude that God is going to show him the redemption. You understand that? That the more bitachon that you have in God, the greater that you will see God's hand in your life. The base of Aham goes and says, uh, you know, explains a different uh, Pasuk and Tehillim. Something fascinating. Uh, in the Pasuk Tehillim, chapter 91, verse 15, it says, 
if he will call out to me, I will answer him. If I'm with him in the in the I'm with him with the pain, I will save him and I will I will rescue him and I will uh, and I will honor him. Says the Beit Avraham goes like this. He says, listen to this. Listen to how the tzaddikim are able to take the words of Tehillim and break it upon and learn so much from this. It says, says the Beit Avraham, if if he, if a person goes and goes kali and he calls me out, if God says if someone calls me out, then Manel, I'll answer him. If someone has faith in me, needs a response, whatever it is, I'll answer him. But if his bitachon, if his emuna, if his faith is intensified. And he is, and he knows that Imo Anochi Batzara, I am with him. Says God, if he knows that I am with him in the, you know, in the pain, then not only will I listen to him, but Achal Tseu, I will rescue him, and I will Vachabdeu, I will grant him honor. Which means the it's proportion to how much you have faith and and emuna to God. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.